Okay, so my name is Zheng Zizhao from NERSC User Engagement Group. So I'm going to talk about program environment and the compilation. Uh, this is my outline. So I will um, just give the overview on Cori compilation and then talk about how to deal with compile and link lines. So basically they are compilers and compiler flags and then the, the paths to the headers and libraries and also the libraries themselves. And uh, talk about available libraries and give some examples of linking uh, and then talk about a build a package manager called spec and then summarize the talk. So um, we support three uh, program environment. Uh, so they are Intel, GNU, and Cray compilers, and Intel is the default. So by programming environment, we, um, we mean um, those compilers and the, and the matching libraries and they are the module uh, is something like prg env dash and here are the compiler names so dash intel uh, they provide user-friendly program environment so if you want to change compilers you can do module swap uh, this program environment module to get the whole matching environment uh, so use um, so compiler wrappers provided by Cray, so they are FTN, CC, and C++, the capital CC. So they are for Fortran, C, and C++, respectively. Uh, so using the, the compiler wrappers, you can get the headers and library paths and the libraries included in your compilation link lines automatically. So as um, Rebecca has already introduced the hardware and we have two types of processors on Cori. So one uh, is the, the bigger portion is KNL and the other one is Haswell. So in terms of compilation, you need to be aware of the binary compatibility. So Haswell binaries run on KNL, but KNL's binary will not run on Haswell. Uh, that's because KNL supports the extended instruction sets, which are not supported on Haswell. So usually we uh, recommend the separate builds for Haswell and the KNL. Uh, this is for optimal performance. Uh, so we, we do cross compilation. So you log in to Cori, then on the login node, which is Haswell nodes, and you can compile for uh, Haswell and the KNL computer nodes. Um, so by default, um, we load a module named CrayPE-Haswell. So this one will set an environment variable called Cray underscore CPU underscore target equal to Haswell. So with this environment variable, and if you use compiler wrappers to build the code, then uh, the binaries will be optimized for Haswell processors. So this is a default behavior on Cori. So if you go to a log into Cori and type module list, you can see a lot of modules. And among them, you need to <coughs> You can uh, take a look at the PRG EMV Intel module. This is loaded by default. That's what we mean by uh, Intel compiler is default. With this, you can see Intel compiler also loaded by default. And uh, in addition, we have this CrayPE-Haswell um, loaded. So that's why if you use compiler wrappers to compile, the resulting binaries will be optimized for Haswell. So this is the step. So if you uh, want to compile for Cori Haswell, that is easy. <clears throat> you don't have to do anything but uh, to switch modules and, and those things. You just do use these compiler wrappers and specify your compilation flags 
and then just provide the source code. So that's uh, how you use Intel compiler. To use Cray, uh, Cray and the GNU compiler, you need to swap the compiler first. So you do a module at program environment swap by using this module command. So doing this, and then you still do the same thing, use the compiler wrappers to do the uh, compilation. So Cray is the same. You can see that this is the, the basics for how to compile on Cory. So um, I want to point out, so some users had confusion, like uh, they consider, they thought FTN, CC, and C++ are Cray compilers. Actually, they are not. So they invoke the Intel, GNU, or Cray compilers under the hood, depending on the uh, loaded program environment module. So these are called compiler wrappers. They are not Cray compiler. So to compile for Cori KNL, uh, you just need to do one more step. You swap this Cray, swap this Cray um, PE Haswell module to Cray PE Mike KNL module. So again, by doing that, you can uh, that uh, Cray underscore CPU target environment will be reset to KNL so that the resulting binaries you build will be optimized for the KNL architecture. So next, um, I will talk about how to deal with the compile and link line. So let's look at the compilers. So at this stage, I think you are new to uh, we suppose you're new to Cori and we don't want to recommend any specific compiler for you. Uh, so in general, these are the comments we can provide. So for Intel, uh, if you use Intel compiler, you will have a better chance to get processor specific optimizations, especially for the newer processor types, something like KNL. Uh, we consider you, you may have better chance to getting, uh, you know, more process specific optimizations from using Intel compiler. For Cray compiler, actually many features and optimizations are supported and especially Cray compiler is very strong with, uh, I mean, with Fortran. So, um, uh, and uh, there are like uh, useful tools like Reveal, they work with the Cray compilers only. So you may consider to use Cray compiler uh, in that sense. So GNU is widely used by, uh, you know, community. So many open source, so I mean, open software, they, they use, I mean, by default, they usually provide GNU compiler, configure and, and make file and all sorts of things. So our recommendations, you, you start with the compilers that vendor or code developers used. So to minimize the chance to hit the uh, compiler and code bugs, and then you can explore the different, uh, explore different compilers for optimal performance. So regarding the compiler flags, we want, we prefer to recommend more like modest compiler optimization, uh, at least to start with. So we usually um, uh, provide the default optimization level for uh, Intel and the Cray compiler, but GNU compiler's default optimization is low. It doesn't do any optimization by default. So you need to provide at least O2 level of um, you know, optimization flag. So we recommend that. And uh, for to compile open MP code, you need to provide extra flags. So for Intel, you need to provide this flag. And then you can see GNU and, and Cray does different uh, um, the flag. So one thing I want to point out is uh, before the Cray compiler version 9.0, uh, Cray uses uh, their own implementation backend for both Fortran and the C, C and C++ compilers. But from this new, newer version, 9.0 and up, Cray uh, C++ 
compilers now use this clan as backend. So uh, if you use C and C++ compilers uh, of Cray compiler now, then you need to um, use those matching compiler flags. Those are all from this uh, clan compiler options. So uh, Cray also provided the classic module, so which um, still support the older, I mean, previous C and C++ backend. And we re but we recommend you switch um, to the newer recommendation from them. So we want to, uh, you know, so just want to add like after you're com compiling the code, you, you need to valid validate uh, the, the correctness of the code. So usually you may want to use this debug flag to lower the optimization and see if you get the same result with using the optimization flag and without using that. So to see your result is um, um, trustable. And also uh, I want to point out, uh, pay attention to the, the different compilers default behavior. So something like um, the OpenMP thread usage could be different from uh, different compilers. So for example, Intel and the GNU, they default to uh, use the number of OpenMP threads equal to the number of CPU slots available, while Cray compiler only use one by default. So we uh, recommend you to read the, the compiler main page. So you can do main and then the native compiler call like ifault ICPC and type of thing to get the compiler uh, more information about compiler uh, flags and more. So um, now let's look at how should the, uh, one take care of takes care of the link, uh, the header and the library paths and the library. So you can do this uh, as usual, like you can do it manually. So first you need to find out where those paths are and then where the libraries reside and then just add them manually on your compile link line by using minus I and then minus capital L option. But this can be done also automatically if you use the compiler wrappers. So we recommend the compiler wrappers uh, where possible. So I will talk about a little bit more about what these uh, compiler wrappers do for you. So use these compiler wrappers. Um, so you can get um, underlying additional compiler flags that uh, optimize the, uh, the, the compute architecture. So that's one thing. And then, uh, and then, so when you switch to different compilers, you still use, you, you can still use the same compiler uh, wrapper call. You can still use FTN for Fortran and, and, and just continue to use compiler wrappers. So uh, with, uh, compiler wrappers, they do cross compilation. So you can use that to compile for uh, KNL, KNL on the login nodes. And in some of the cases, you may need to compile um, codes directly on KNL node. So in that case, you need to get on a computer node first. Uh, you can use this interactive QoS, get on the computer node first, and then compile from there. So compiler wrappers now uh, link dynamic, dynamically by default. So not long ago, I mean, last year, before this AY uh, allocation year, we were doing, I mean, compiler wrappers, uh, our default compiler wrappers were doing static linking, but from this AY year, it's, it's started to do dynamic linking. So uh, because of that, so you need to, after you get the code compiled, you need to take care of the runtime environment. Usually you need to use this load library underscore path environment variable to provide 
uh, where your shared library is. Um, and uh, we recommend actually alternatively, if you use this uh, R pass uh, when compiling, then you don't have to be, you know, you don't have to deal with this load library pass environment. So uh, one thing we need to notice is the dynamically linked applications can take time to load up at the at runtime. So uh, if you are, if you have to run like you you run your application at a large scale, you may consider to build your applications statically uh, using this environment variable before compiling. So the reason we uh, recommend the compiler wrappers, we can list a couple uh, points over here. So first, it, it has uh, some architecture specific compiler flags. I already mentioned this. So under the hood, it will add those architecture specific flags. And then it automatically add header and library paths. And also the libraries on the compile link line. And also, uh, it allows you to provide, I mean, it allow user provided options to take the precedence. So it, is, it does good things for you by default, but still you can overwrite them uh, by providing explicitly your options. So you can take a look um, the verbose output from compiler wrappers. So by default, um, you can see that if you do module list, you can see some modules are loaded, something like Cray uh, MPG library and also Cray libsci library. This provides mass libraries. So by default, uh, the compiler wrappers will link to this MPI and this uh, LAPEC and BLAST libraries by default automatically. So you don't have to worry about them. And also for all the Cray provided libraries, if you load them, you can get them linked automatically. So you can take a look at the compiler's verbose output. It's uh, hard to read, like, but you can take a look um, what the, I mean, the compiler wrappers link under the hood. So you can see many libraries um, linked in, although you didn't provide anything, like you just do FTN and then the code name, but under the hood, it does a lot of thing for you. So uh, the reason I want to point out this verbose output is because uh, uh, it can provide a lot of information. So many things um, actually you can learn from its output, even for the, let's say, if you want to manually link some like MKL library, you may not know like, exactly what the libraries you should provide. So you can learn from that. So in, in this case, it shows, uh, you can see the libraries, MKL libraries entered those, entered in the link line. So you can learn a lot from the verbose output of compiler wrappers. So uh, I'm, going to talk about so available libraries and provide some examples in this section. So we use uh, module mechanisms to manage our software. So you can type module available to see the available software. So usually uh, we have two types of uh, supported libraries. One is from Cray. These are the vendor provided um, packages and libraries. They usually come from, the many of them come from this path. And then you can type module available command to again, you see the, see the available one. And here, uh, NERSC staff also support a lot of libraries, but uh, uh, so far, most of our NERSC NERSC staff supported libraries, they do not interact with the Cray compiler wrappers. So if you use NERSC pro provided um, NERSC staff supported libraries, then you have to still uh, do some manual things to provide libraries. 
So you can type module show command to see the installation paths. So you can find where the libraries reside. So this is uh, examples of linking to create provided libraries. So you can do, um, uh, let's say, to link with Cray MPH library and the Cray scientific libraries. You don't have to do anything. Just in the default environment, just to use compiler wrappers and then provide the source code. And linking to the Cray HDF 5 and the NetCDF libraries also automatic. You just load them and then compile without uh, worrying about the compile link line. So again, uh, you can use this minus verbose minus V option to see the detail of the, um, the linking. So something similar like for patch C is widely used library. You can look at uh, just to load the, the your choice of create patch C module and then you can use minus V option to see how it links. The same with FFTW. So um, those are, you know, how you, so basically if you use compiler wrappers, then linking to create provided libraries is pretty easy. Uh, so linking to uh, NERSC provided libraries, you need to do a little bit manual work. So here you say, if you load uh, GSL, this is an example, you load this, you can get one environment variables called GSL defined. So it, it, it stands for this long string over here. So you need to provide that on the compile link line uh, manually. So this is an example of uh, linking to MKL library. We recommend this uh, uh, MKL link line advisor. So go there, provide your options, uh, your choices, then it will provide the, um, the exact link line for you. So if you want to, for some reason, use Intel MPI library, then you can just, uh, you need to load this separate module called IMPI and then use the, uh, the MPI wrappers provided by Intel to compile your MPI code. So I will uh, just briefly introduce uh, what it, the one we recently provided, uh, the spec a package manager. So basically we want uh, this package manager make your installation work easy. So it has a lot of good features and among them, uh, I mean the, the spec installation is easy um, kind of to, it always take care of your uh, dependencies and with a simple command like spec install, it can do many things under the hood and it, it allows you to specify um, the configuration with your choices of compiler and runtime and and also the uh, I'm sorry the, your choice of compiler and compile time options and all these things. So uh, on on Cori we provide a spec module so you can uh, access it by doing module load spec. So the advantage of using that is you can access to NERSC recommended up-to-date configuration files, but you can overwrite them, uh, you know, by putting your own config files in your uh, home directory under that spec directory. So these are the building examples. So you just load the module and check if any, uh, check the list of supported packages and then find if, if any of them, I mean, the package is installed. Usually you do spec find and then package name, you can find if it's installed on Cori. And if not, then you can type spec install and then provide package name to install. So these are some examples of specific packages, but you can take a look. Some of the small like tools like nano, kind of GNU plot and those things, if you want the specific version, it will be very easy to install. So if a spec install fails, we hope you, uh, we recommend you to open issue directly at the developer's site 
and then you you can modify that um, on your own and then build on our system so we provide like a set, set we configured our module spec module with different uh, local repos so this is the place you can put the package file and do modification there sorry i'm running out of time so as a summary i want to uh, emphasize a few uh, but the use of compiler wrappers where possible this is a uh, highly recommended uh, Yes, still I think the, the main point of this talk is use compiler wrappers where possible. And then you can learn from compiler wrappers. And for the, you know, your own build, you can try out the spec. Okay, thank you.